Okay, Tov Yeladim. Shalom. 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 everybody. Everybody, come on in class. Turn on your cameras. Turn on your microphones. It's time for <coughs> our morning theology class. All righty, let's start off our day with some prayer. Some Shema in the Ten Commandments. Jennifer is going to pray. Lemma Land over there is going to do the Shema. And Jeanette's going to do the Ten Commandments. Jennifer is going to pray. Lemma Land is going to do the Shema. And Jeanette's going to do the Ten Commandments. Start us off, Jennifer. Thank you, Lord, for this day you have given us. I ask you, Lord, for this day to be You teach us to know Guide us. I ask you, please, give us knowledge and strength today. I ask you, Lord, for this hour to be filled with your love. I need to learn your song. I'm going to make I need to add a whole new song. I'm closer to the microphone, Jeanette. I am Lord your God who brought you to the land of Egypt. Do not have any idols before me. Do not take the Lord's day in vain. Keep the Shiva holy, honor your mother and father. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not lie, and do not covet. Uh, amen. Let's give Jeanette a big two fingers. Uh, la, 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 now it's time to read our portion that we're going to start off our class with today. And Lev's already got her hand up. So Lev, read Shemot 10, verse 1 and 2. Adonai said to Moshe, Go to Pharaoh, for I have made him and his servants hard heart, so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine among them, so that you can tell the your son and grandson about what I did to Egypt and about my signs that I demonstrated among them. And so that you all will know that I am Adonai. Thank you. <clears throat> Lever, baloney, baloney, Jonah. Turkey, baloney, beef, baloney. All right. So, <clears throat> Yesterday, we were talking about um, the death of the firstborn, about the, the main portion of this, uh, this Torah portion here. And um, what we have to be able to do, everybody, is be able to say to people who don't believe in God, why God does things. Because people will say, well, why did the baby die? Why did my mom, why, why did my dad get sick? Why, why this, why that? And we have to understand that there's a plan that God does, okay? <clears throat> Everything that God does, Jehovah, does, is to make a path for you to come back to heaven one day. But you get to choose your path, okay? You get to choose. Parents will 
to certain things when you're growing up, but when you get to be an adult, and even sometimes when you get to be a teenager, sometimes it gets so bad, the parents have to kick the teenager out of the house because they don't want to follow. But you get to choose as you get older. You're going to get to choose more and more things that you do. And some children will be obedient, but they won't believe and they'll say, well, as soon as I'm old enough to go to college, I'm going to go as far away from my, this family as I can because I don't want to do any of it. Right now, while you're still young, we're trying to give you the truth. Now, you may or may not believe the truth. Your parents and myself are supposed to give you what truth is. Now, Jehovah said here is level, read it, read it. Let's read it again. Who wants to read it again? I can't read it twice, Lev. Okay. Somebody else has raised their hand. Mia, you read verse one and two again. Jehovah said to Moshe. Go to Pharaoh, for I have made him and his servants hard-hearted, so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine among them, so that you can tell your son and grandson about what you did to Egypt and about my signs that I demonstrate among them, and so that you will all know that I am Jehovah. Okay, so what do you think that we got to tell you kids is why, why do we have to go over this year after year after year? What do you think, uh, Adrian? Uh -huh. I'm sitting back here and getting all comfortable and not paying attention, getting all cozy in my chair and warm blanket. And... I don't know. No, no, you don't you know. Don't know because you weren't paying attention. You don't know what the question is. I'm supposed to. You could leave. Go ahead. Leave my class. Tell your mom why you have to leave. Okay. Go ahead, Adrian. Up, out. Yeah, what do you think? Well, I think it's good to talk about. Why? Well, it's a good example. Like, because um, they were, the Israelites were kind of, um, were, they weren't, um, well, um, Never mind about that. Well, it's it kind of um it, it's it's a good it's a good part of history that um because it's about how how God um helped the Israelites out of Egypt. Okay, Victoria, Victoria. Why do why do we why do we gotta go over this year after year after year? What, what do you think the purpose is? Well, each year, like for us kids, like when we first read the Torah, like maybe like when we're four or five, we won't we'll understand only some things, and then while the years go passing, we'll be like, oh, that's what that meant, or like. Oh, I understand this so much better now. And also, we go over it because just so that, like, we don't forget about what we have to do and to not stop this, like, like all the holy days and just to not lose that, that knowledge. Not to lose that knowledge. Okay. What do you think, uh, Yeshua? What do you think, Yeshua? Why do we have to go over this a year after year? What do you think? What, you know, give me some wisdom from you, the eight-year-old. Can't hear you. 
your, your computer is all messed up. You're in triangle. I try to turn it again. You guys got to log back in. You got to log out and log back in. Oh, can you yell? You gotta yell. You gotta yell. Why, why do you think we got, you know, this is maybe like your first time doing this. Why do you think we got to tell you something that happened a couple of thousand years ago? What's the purpose of telling you? Telling I'm sorry, I got the out of pollen. One second, let me unmute you. Hey, go ahead, Yadia. Why do you think we got to do this? We could forget about it and like we would like not do it if we forget about it. And... So what, what, who cares if we forget about it? It's something that happened 3,000 years ago. Well, you guys care if you forget about it because you guys did the same. What? I don't understand what you just said. Like, you got you guys cared that we learned it, so it's like because you guys do the same. So, what what do we care about? What happened? Suppose you know something that happened three thousand years ago. Tell your grandsons about what you know, what didn't need you. Why should we care? Um, you should care because you're like someone who actually real like someone that believes in God a lot. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Let's see if we can hear Yeshua now. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lara Land. <laughs> no. All that stuff, the sound is and then your picture goes out to a reboot. Okay, uh, let's go over to Lev. Lev, what do you think, Leveroni? Why don't we got to talk about this year after year? What do we got to think? Tell our grandsons and grandchildren about it, you know? What? Why? Well, the reason why we have to do this is because when we when we say when we like when we explain it to our grandchildren and grandsons and and our sons, then basically it'll then you might forget something or like you might forget something and you have to go back you have to go back the next year to see what you missed okay well that didn't really answer the question it was uh, in the neighborhood it was the street somewhere okay what do you think marley marley and then ally a little marley then ally really what, what do you think you know we gotta go over this stuff year after year <clears throat> tell about what happened in egypt a couple thousand years ago and you're a gentile and then you're like well what do i care about this stuff what do you think marley so i got a hood on well, it's good to go over things because what if you miss something? You have to go back at it and uh, try to find the thing that you're missing. Why should you care about it? This is in a book that's a couple thousand years old. And, you know, you're, you're a Gentile, Marley. You know, why should you care what happened to the Jews and the Egyptians? You're not Egyptian. You're not a Jew. You're like, why am I learning about this? Why am I wasting my time? You're not wasting time. 
Adrian thought so. I actually yeah. don't. Yeah, well, that's him. Not me. You actually don't, Adrian? I thought you were supposed to leave the class. He's right now on the ground. Did you tell your mother? Not yet, because we want to stay in class. Adrian. Well, then get in the chair, Adrian. Out of the blanket. Out the blanket, Adrian. Okay, Marley. So why 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 do you people from South South Africa, you know, Gentiles? What do you care what happened in Egypt and the Jews? Why why are we gonna learn this? Well. To me, I think it's important because God, who created us, um, wants us to obey Him. He wants us to um, learn so that if we are tested, say by the devil or our faith, that's what also means, then we could stand up for our faith. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting that. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. We're, we're getting a little closer. Let's go over to Mia's got her hand up. And then we're going to go over to Jeanette or no, then we're going to go over to Brian next after Mia. Okay. So the reason oh, we're wait, 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 I forgot about Allie. I said Allie okay. was, Allie was saying, whew, I don't have to answer the question. I'm going to go Allie, Mia, and Brian. So Allie, you know, why, you know, you're Allie Mae Randall. You're some Scandinavian heritage. You're like German or something. What's Randall? What, what What's your lineage? My mom doesn't know. Mom doesn't know. She's a, so, she's a, she's a gypsy. Randall's not her last name. Oh, her, her, that's her married last name. What about your dad? Yeah. What about your dad? Where does he come from? Does he know? No. <laughs> they don't know where we come from. <laughs> Randall is probably like an English name. Daddy, do you know where where we come from? I've um, always wondered. Come from the land down under, North Carolina. That's what I was going to say. It reminds me of that song. <laughs> <laughs> I never had veggie mic, but <laughs> you can't eat that. That's not kosher anymore, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, well, you come from a land down under called North Carolina, where it's hot and humid. Lots of pollen. <laughs> okay, so why why should Ally May Ally May Radio why should Ally May Radio care about what happened three thousand years ago in Egypt to a people group that you don't belong to? Because if you, because you need to know what happened to your ancestors so that way it won't happen again. Okay, you need to know what happened to your ancestors so it won't happen again, but those aren't your ancestors. Well, you're I, grafted in through Messiah Yeshua, but. Yeah. Um, you need to know what happened so that way you won't make that mistake again because. Sometimes people don't read the um, read history or something, and it happens again because they made the mistake not to read their history book in school. Something stupid. Okay, so this is a history book. So you're thinking it's a history book? Well, no, that was just an example. Okay. So why do you need to know it? Because so that way we I'm trying to get you guys to do is think. Say in the beginning of our class and maybe for the whole class, <clears throat> we're gonna think. Because we gotta understand yeah, 
Yeah, ask the questions even as, you know, Allie, what, you're 15, I think you said? You're 12. Allie's 12. No, I'm not. I'm about to turn 15. Uh, I'm not 12. I'm 15. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I want you guys to think. Okay, Mia was next, and then and Brian. Mia, why do I got to go now? You're Hebrew, so this is your lineage. But you're you're living here in the, in North America. <laughs> yeah. Living for right now in New Jersey. Not for much longer. God, God willing. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. I still like New Jersey. Anyway, I, what I think about this is that, yeah, the, yeah, we have to, we have to, God says do it over and over and over to like tell our, tell our children about it from generation to generation. Why should we do that? So that we can learn, we can learn what happened. What is it? Those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. So that means that also we can also when we learn about this, we can also parallel the whatever is happening now with what happened then. Okay, so you don't study history, you're doing a lot of people don't believe that this really happened. The Bible is a collection of stories. All right, we're gonna get to that in a minute. Okay, Brian, Brian. You know, why do we got to do this, Brian? Come close to the microphone. Let me hear your opinion. And Junior, you're next. We can understand the past. Yeah, but who cares about the past? The past is in the past. Like to, to understand the past and how it used to be like. Yeah, but they didn't have internet back then. They didn't have television. They didn't have, they didn't have cell phones, man. Like, like, uh, so if we like, if the, our parents told us something and we missed them, we can understand how it used to be like there. Not like one shit. What he did to save our lives. All right. Well, how's this gonna help you in your in your future, Brian? Like maybe one day you're gonna grow up and maybe you'll meet a, a beautiful young woman and you want to marry her and start a family of your own. Well, what does this matter to you, Brian? It's our faith. Faith will grow stronger. You understand more. Faith will grow faith. Our faith will grow stronger. Learning about something that happened three thousand years ago to people we don't know, people that we don't. Well, Egyptians, like who cares about Egypt? Man? Good answer so far, Brian. Okay, uh, Junior, Junior, why, you know, you're going to public school, now you're home and every morning your, your mom gets you up and you, now you gotta come to this class and you're like, why am I gonna go to this class? I wanna sleep, right Junior? Yeah, no. <laughs> Why, why do you think we're going over? Why, why do you think we're going over this stuff? Because I feel like it helps like understand why are things like this? Because like in the past this happened, so now this is like this now. So like you know, it helps us understand things and how things be, be playing. Okay, it helps you to understand how things became this way. But we yeah. don't see God, you know, sending hell and locusts and no, actually we do see that right now. You know, he's, so what, 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 what do you care about what happened to the Egyptians, Junior? You're not Egyptian. You're like Puerto Rican or something, right? Yeah. Um, it's like, um, it kind of gives us, um, somewhat of a picture of what happened you know like if someone comes up and says oh this happened like five thousand years ago 
and they have no type of evidence, no one's going to believe them. But when you have evidence, it kind of tells you, okay, so this happened, and there's evidence, because in this book that was made, someone wrote 5,000 years ago, that happened. So it gives us, like, kind of a picture, and like it just tells us, like, oh, this happened. Okay, that's that's well thought out, Junior. That's excellent. That's an excellent uh, understanding. Okay, this happened like that. Let's see if we can hear Yeshua. Can we hear you now? Let's see if we can hear you guys. Hello. Oh, we can hear you now. I'm gonna say that. If there's a hole in the ground and, and a cover and I fall in and I don't remember it was there that like for years. I don't remember if it was there. Then I fall in the trap. Like when you don't do taste that and and you don't remember it. And you in the past years you don't do face that. Then you're gonna be then you're gonna be in slavery. All in slavery. Okay, so you don't wanna be in, you don't wanna be a slave? No. Why not? I think it'd be fun. No. He's hard work. You don't eat. You don't. You don't eat. You don't play. Oh. You get whip on your back. Oh well, we're gonna get a farm going on your your house there, and you're gonna start working. We're gonna make you chop wood. Hey, hey, maybe. Not maybe. We're gonna teach you how to work hard. <laughs> I... If you don't work hard, you're going to get the chancleta. <laughs> yeah, I... I want to live. All right. Let me, go over to, let me go over to Jeanette. Jeanette, what do you think, Jeanette? Why do we got to go over this stuff over and over and over and over and over and over? Heard some pretty good answers so far. What do you think, Jeanette? I'm close to the microphone. Um, I think that it's good for us because history can't repeat itself again. I'm close to the microphone. Talk near the microphone. <clears throat> I think that it's good. It's good to repeat it because um, history can't repeat itself again. Yeah, but this happened 3,000 more years ago. It happened to a bunch of Jewish people. You're not a Jew, Jeanette. Well, maybe you are. But, you know, you know, it happened to Egyptians. It happened in the Middle East. Like, you're living up in New York State, you know? Why should you care about what happened there? Because um, that, at that time, God was showing his power to the Egyptians. <laughs> And we serve that God that was showing the power, the power. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, Jeanette. Okay, Kevin. Kevin Lama. Kevin Lama. What do you think, Kevin? I'm nice and close to the microphone. What do you think? You think you're a smoke detector? All I heard was beep. No. What do you think, what, Kevin? Why? Why do we gotta know what God did? You know, this, this God that you can't see. You know, you know, he's up in heaven. He's busy running the universe. Why do we gotta learn what he did two thousand years ago, Kevin? And 
what he did to Egyptians. Why do we got to tell our children, our grandchildren? I'm close to the microphone, please. So then they can know about it. Okay, so you, who cares if they know about it? Why? Why? Why is that important? Then they can know about the Bible. Okay, they know about the Bible. Okay, so people know about a book that's a couple of thousand years old. So what do we care about that? Why why should we care about that, Kevin? Because it tells about the past. So we gotta learn about the past? Yes. Well, they didn't have a bicycle back then in the past. They didn't have, you know, running water and toilets in their house. They didn't have internet. What do we care about? These people, they didn't have none of the stuff we got. It gives us faith. Okay, it gives us faith. All right, good job, Kevin. All right. So one of the things why we're doing this to everybody is one of Satan's greatest tricks, and most people fall for it, is that there is, people don't believe in God. People don't believe in the devil. They just believe in themselves. They believe in science or whatever. The devil's greatest trick is for you not to believe in him. One of his greatest achievements is for you not to believe in him. That, that people are good. Okay? People are really good. People are not good without God. People are bad without God. People are evil without God. Because without God, you'll do whatever you think is right. So you'll lie, you'll cheat, you'll steal. You'll do evil things because you have no foundation. Once the devil says, well, I'm not really here. I'm not really here. And once he convinces you that he's not real, that there's not evil in the world, then he's won the he's won the game because then you don't then you don't think that there's a hell. Once you don't believe that there's a devil, then you really don't believe in God. Okay, and once you're like a kid and like, yeah, I'll go to the congregation because my parents are dragging me there, but I don't really want to go for that. It's boring. All we do is talk about God. I want to talk about God. I want to go and play. It's, it's Saturday. I want to go and play. Okay? Once you forget the past, okay, I've said it a number of times, you're doomed to repeat it. Because people are evil. And history has proven that people are evil. When you remove God from your home, so when you, when you don't teach your children, when the parents don't believe it themselves, that you got to follow God's laws, then they don't really teach their children. And then those children grow up to be very bad people. I'm not a bad person. Well, what makes you a good person? Are you doing what God says? Because good to you might not be good to somebody else. Somebody who's eating a hamburger might be evil to somebody who's a vegetarian. You killed that poor cow and the cow had feelings and you're eating the cow and that's terrible. You should only eat plants and vegetables and things like that. So you're evil because you're a meat eater. That's what a vegetarian would think, that you're evil because they think now we think I'm evil because I'm eating a hamburger. Go away from me. Okay? But then everybody does what's right in their own eyes. But God said, eat the meat. God told you in Leviticus 11, Biker 11, this is what food is for you. But oh, there's no God. We evolved from fish. The first fish came up on land and it said, I like this.
Okay, but they'll believe in it. We evolved from monkeys. We evolved from fish. And we can, everybody do the fish. Okay, we came out of the water and we started to breathe air. Huh? So does that mean that we can go back in the water and start breathing water? Let's hold Lev under the water for about five minutes and see what happens. Let's hold Michael on. Michael doesn't talk much. Let's see if we hold Michael underwater for five minutes and see if Michael can breathe. Maybe Brian. It'll be quieter after that five minutes. And Allie. Let's hold Allie on. Let's hold Allie May underwater for five minutes. She loves the pool anyway. We're in the summertime. She's like a fish anyway. So maybe we'll hold her under the water for five minutes and see if she can breathe. Okay. So the key here to the start of our class is we go over this year after year so that you don't forget. So that you'll teach your children. So it says, Jehovah said to Moshe, go to Pharaoh, for I have made him and his servants hard-hearted, so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine among them, so that you can tell your son and grandson about what I did to Egypt, about my signs that I demonstrated among them, and so that you will all know that I am Jehovah. Okay? So each year when we do the Pesach, we're supposed to tell the whole in the Esther, we call it the Megillah, the whole Megillah, the whole thing. So we're, we're supposed to have a whole Seder to remind us about the signs that God did, about what he did to the Egyptians, okay? Because once you children forget, you're going to do what's ever right in your own eye. Once you forget that there's a God and there's a rule book, Way rules to how you get blessings and how you get cursed. This is what's going on in America right now in the world with this this fake coronavirus. It really is a fake. It's not a pandemic. Millions of people have not died. Pandemic is when millions of people die. Okay. And when you don't have truth, then you're going to lie. You know, and we can all tell that from the numbers in New York City. Every year, thousands and thousands of people die from heart attacks in New York City in the month of April. All of a sudden, this year, nobody died from heart attacks in New York City in April. Nobody died from a heart attack. No, they all died from COVID. They lie. Okay? Because year after year, thousands and thousands of people die from heart attacks and asthma all these different things in New York City. And all of a sudden, now nobody died from any of those. Hmm. So that means evil has risen. But people don't want to believe that there really is a devil. So the Lord is telling us, you know, I really, I really love this picture. Beautiful picture. And the whole family is sitting around there and it, and it looks like grandpa is telling all the grandchildren the great great story about what God did. He's telling us telling about the stories in the Bible, the accounts in the Bible. They're sitting by the beautiful fireplaces, keeping everybody warm. Looks like this takes place in the, well, maybe the 18, 1800s or maybe 1700s. They got the beautiful fireplace, keeping everybody warm. And Grandpa's telling everybody about the Bible. He's reminding them about how there is a God in heaven. I mean, all the kids are sitting there. And the mother's holding the little girl and they listen to grandpa tell his story. He said, so God did what hell from heaven. And then when the hell hit the ground, it turned to fire. And then locusts came, and all the locusts ate up everything that was not nailed down, and they ate up all the food, but it didn't happen to the Israelites. Oh, shit. So God is telling us, remind our children, because you got to be able to defend your faith. Because a lot of people are going to say, 
Oh God, why did he kill all the Egyptian babies? They didn't do nothing wrong. Babies did nothing wrong. Maybe God was saving the babies because their parents are going to dedicate them to some demon God. God said, before they do that, I'm going to bring them back up to heaven with me. But it made their mommies and daddies so sad. Well, sad is when you leave God and you go into the world. And you forgot and you stop worshiping on Shabbat. And you stop wearing the seat yoke to the boys. And you stop keeping the commandments. That's sad. God is saying, don't forget to tell your, your, your grandchildren. Because once you forget to tell your grandchildren, you get like Adrian yawning again. Everybody hey, we haven't done the alley May in a while. Everybody do the alley May. Oh! They lean back in their chair. Oh. All right, so let's move on to the next part. Because the key here is once Satan tricks you into thinking he's not there, then he's got you. Once he tricks you into believing that God's not there, then he's got you. Let's see what this next one is. Wow, look at these two guys fighting. All right. Marley, read verse three. Moshe and Aaron went to Pharaoh, went into Pharaoh and said to him, Here's what Adonai, God of the Hebrews, say, says, How much longer will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so that they can worship me. All right. Thank you, Miss Marley. All right. What does the word submit mean? Let's see if we can go. We'll go to Yeshua this time. Start out with Yeshua. What does the word Submit mean, Mr. Yeshua? Like surrender. Like give up, surrender. Give up, surrender. Wow, that's pretty good, Yeshua. Very good. Okay, that's very good. If you give up or surrender. Okay, do you think that the big guy is hurting the other man's face? Yes. What's he trying to do? He's trying to choke him. But he's got his hand around his neck. But the guy, the guy is trying to lose so force. He's trying to lose it, but he yeah. can breathe and he could do the. Yeah. Then he could throw him on his back on the floor. He could throw him on the floor. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's go over to uh, Yadiel. What does the word submit, Yadiel? What does the word submit? Um, submit or submit? Submit. S-U-B-M-I-T. S-U-B-M-I-T. Submit. Uh, I don't really know. You don't really know? All right, let's go over to Victoria. What does the word submit mean, Victoria? Um, the, wait. So I know that like when I take a quiz or something, it says submit, but I'm not sure if that's like, it has the same meaning with this sentence. So for the quiz submit, it's like to, to, to give, no, to like submit it. <laughs> um, I guess it's like to give that, that um, your answer to a person or uh, 
I'm not sure. Okay. What? How old are you, Victoria? Twelve. We gotta start going over some vocabulary words for you guys. Twelve years old, you should know what submit means. Okay. I want you to look it up, Victoria, today, and write down the definition, and then write three sentences with the word submit in it. So look up the word submit. Write down the definition for yourself, and then write three sentences with the word submitted. Ali Mae is wiggling her guitar fingers. Well, she's got piano fingers too. Um, that submit would be um to hand in to the teacher or whoever you are giving your paper to, whoever you are submitting your paper to. To give to. Okay. So what does submit mean in this sentence? How much longer will you refuse to submit to me? To um, to give up, to surrender, um, give in, um, quit. Give up, surrender, quit. Very good. Mia's waving her piano fingers. Mm. The word submit would mean like to give in to someone. Like how the Lord says, how long will you refuse to submit to me? Like pretty much you listen and you do as you're told. You stop fighting pretty much. Why was Shara fighting? Because he wasn't letting the people go. They're his people. Well, they're not exactly his people. They're just the people he had in captivity. But no, in reality, they were God's people. They're his slaves, though. Who has the high, who has the higher authority, God or Pharaoh? Even even the person highest in power has to listen to the Lord. Even Satan listens to God. So, Aaron and Moshe, Moshe is telling Pharaoh, "You got to submit to me, submit to our God." The Lord is using Moshe and Aaron as his mouthpiece, I guess you could say. No, the Lord is using Moshe and Aaron as his vessels to go tell Pharaoh what he wants, what he wants to say to Pharaoh. Okay, pretty good. We've got all our de got the definitions now. Submitting means to yield to, to surrender to. Okay. Now. Let's read the sentence. Moshe and Aaron went into, went into Pharaoh and said to him, here's what Jehovah, the, the Elohim of the Hebrews said. How much longer will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so they can worship me. Uh, Riet, number three. Why was Pharaoh not yielding to God? Why was he not surrendering to God? Well, I think um, God, God hardened his heart. So maybe it's like to prove to to them, to the Egyptians that he is the one true God. Why do people harden their hearts against God, Riyadh? Number three. Well, I maybe because sometimes they forget how powerful he is. And they just want to do things their way. They forget how powerful it is. Okay, orange foot man. <laughs> Why do people refuse to submit to God? Well, that's because they either don't want to believe in a God, or they want to believe in their own gods, not this other God that is actually the real God. They want to live in fairy tale land. What do they say about you living in fairy tale land? Yeah, I do suppose that uh, I do wander around in my in my head a lot. Yeah. So how do you convince Shazad that there really is a god of the Bible? I mean, there was that one point where he simply is going like. God is something that we made up. And then I just bring up that the evolutionists just decided 
to make a whole skeleton. They were able to make a whole skeleton from a single tooth. Apparently, they built a whole skeleton based off a of tooth and deemed it to be an entirely new species of, of homo something. That gave him a chuckle. Okay, so how do you convince you know, how do you convince your friend Shazad to try to submit to the Lord? Well, I'm not really sure because I What do you think, Marley? Marley's shrugging her shoulders. Marley usually has something, always something to say. Well, once he tr he asked how to how we pray, and then Adrian budged in and talked about computers ruined the whole moment. Man, Adrian, you blew it. Yes. It hardens Shazad's heart. So how do you convince Shazad, your 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 you know your your friend, to submit to God? How how would you do it? Like you know, here we got Moshe and Aaron saying to Pharaoh, submit to God. So how 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 do we apply this to our lives? How do we? You got a friend Shazad who's a Muslim, or he's born into a Muslim family. Um, he's in the moon God. Okay. How do you convince him that there, there's a real God? Just like how, how do you convince how do you convince Pharaoh that there was a real God since Pharaoh thought he was a God himself? Mm. He convinced his odd. Well we could always try to question what Shazad believed. Okay. You're gonna question what his beliefs. Is that really gonna have him believe in your God and the only God? Well, if we keep questioning him and find the right words, which I am really bad at, maybe you're he's... bad at talking. Yes, like Moshe. No, I can't believe it. <laughs> I mean, you don't shut up. When you're not in class, you don't shut up. I mean, yes, but it doesn't make <laughs> sense for this little number three here. You don't it shut up all day long. You're you're doing your schoolwork. You don't shut up. The mom's like, Marley. And you're like, okay. I you're like Lev. You're like Lev. Lev never shuts up. Like the Lara house, it's never quiet at the Lara house. Yeah. The Lemma house, the only time they're quiet is when I ask them a question. If I unmute them right now, there's going to be noise in that house. Yes. So how do you convince a, a, another kid to believe in God? Well, if you keep questioning them where they can't answer, maybe that... They will, I don't know, start questioning their beliefs. Mm hmm. All right. Okay. Adrian, want, Adrian, do you want to talk again? Well, I mean, it reminds me of the times that, I mean, he was, he liked to just light and blow the candles that we I mean, he would sometimes um, join us when we started and ended Shabbat. He seemed to kind of like it. What do you mean he started to like it? He kind of liked doing it with us. Okay, well, that's the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Let's go over. Let's uh, ask Junior. Junior, how, how do you get somebody to believe in God? You believe in God, Junior? Um, well, it's like you have to give in like some facts. And it's like if you, it's like winning an argument, you know, 
he has to give up, you know, good evidence and the evidence has to make sense. And it's possible if he went up, if he submits, then you basically win the argument. It's something, it's kind of, it, it kind of goes into something like that. Okay, so how would you, are you convinced that there's God, Junior? Yeah. Well, how, do, how, how can you convince some of the kids that you go to school with when school is actually happening next year? Well, it depends, you know. To some people they may, some people they won't. It's just, when it, it, it all comes down to that person's choice. So, you know, if it's, if you if you like given some facts and then and you say you know good evidence that you should submit you know some people wouldn't agree and they'd be like I don't really think I should, I want to do that and some people will be like oh that pretty makes sense I want to start getting into that so it depends okay All right, it depends you gotta have a different plan for different people. Ali May, how would you convince somebody that there's God? You know, you're like Moshe and Aaron, going to Pharaoh and say, let, let, let the people go. You know, how, do you, how are you going to convince somebody that there's God? You know, North Carolina's opened up a little bit now. You know, got things sort of somewhat going back into normal. You know, somebody comes into the store and, they're, you know, how are you going to convince somebody that, that they're really, they should follow God's law, Ali May? Um... Hmm. I really don't know because a lot of the people that come in the store, I mean, most of the people that come in the store, they're either like Gentiles or Christians, which the Christians are okay. Like, I mean, they believe, but the Gentiles, I'm not really sure about because they just, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do. You know, you're Mo Moses and Aaron saying, let the people go. And Pharaoh's like, why should I let the people, why should I believe in your God? Um. Ali May is speechless. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're coming to the end of the class. Okay. One of the questions you always ask somebody, you can use, you can say to them, where are you going to be a thousand years from now? Where are you going to be a thousand years? All right. We've come to the end of our class. Let me get you all on my screen over here. One second. Ali May had her hand up first. I'm thinking of a number from one to 10. Seven. You're wrong. Yeshua? Go <laughs> ahead. Number. That's a cool rock. Ten. You're wrong. Yadiel, one second, Yadiel. Go ahead, Yadiel. Four. You got it. Mm -hmm. I close us in prayer. Oh, thank you for providing us with food and have, having this class today. And having this teacher and thank you for another our day of life and providing us with food and we can say we're satisfied and 
let, let us be nothing in the hours. Amen. Amen. All right. You guys have a great day. Maybe get outside and get a little sun. Go into your yards. Go get some sun. Mm -hmm. Shalom.